Thank you, Gleb. Good afternoon, everybody. Quick show of hands. How many of you have got a cryptocurrency sitting in your wallets right now? Cool. Wow. It's a good number. Keep your hands up if you know the origin of that cryptocurrency, if you know the provenance of the coin and you can identify and be sure that it's got no bad behavior associated with it. Okay. Just a few of you. So I'm going to talk to you today about a tool that we've developed, Crystal Blockchain, that's going to provide you with a little, more, little bit more surety. It could give you surety, it could give a government agent security, a surety, or it could give a financial institution surety. So for those who might be watching this on video, just to recap on Bitfury, we've been involved in the industry since 2011. We're one of the foundational players in the industry. At any one point, we are processing between 11 to 15% of the Bitcoin transactions. So the point from this is we have experience, we understand the market, we understand blockchains, and we understand cryptocurrency. And we've leveraged all of that knowledge to create our product, Crystal Blockchain, for the following reasons. One is because, as we know, with some 13, 1400 cryptocurrencies now available in the market, this market is booming, and more and more individuals, as is testament at this show, are getting involved, more organizations are. I think the first year this show started, there were maybe 500 people attending, as we're all here today. Those of you that tried to get lunch earlier, you'll notice there are something like eight, eight and a half thousand people here. What that brings is proportionately a higher number of illicit actors into the system. And when you've got approximately 300 transactions happening in the ecosystem on a daily basis, there is a mathematical probability that you're going to get some bad actors. So we believe the time was right to introduce this tool, to begin making this tool available to the wider ecosystem, to begin powering financial institutions with the ability to look inside the blockchain to understand the provenance of coins and to begin to identify the parties that they're about to do business with and create a risk score advisory note almost in advance of doing business with certain entities, individuals, or even with wallets or accepting bitcoins. We're seeing that governments and financial institutions around the world are calling out for tools such as this and we're actively working with them so that they can develop their, develop their compliance frameworks and put to play some of these tools so they can begin getting involved in the market. The challenges that we're trying to solve, for those of you that have ever tried to understand, and not many of you have from the show of hands in this room, the provenance of a crypto coin, it's not very easy. It takes a lot of time. You need a fair amount of technical knowledge. So if you're a regular government organization, if you're a financial institution, or if you're an organization really wanting to conduct solid and reasonable KYC AML, you're either going to have to learn about this new market, or you're going to have to spend a lot of time, or you're going to have to do both. So we've developed Crystal Blockchain. I'll just skip on very quickly because I do want to use the remainder of the time just to show you a little bit of an output of a demonstration of a real life case so that we can provide certain aspects of information in a presentable and understandable way for the layperson that will allow you to create an association between a transaction, a coin, a wallet, an individual, and perhaps even an institution. This allows us to automate the process of KYC and AML to a certain extent. So Crystal can be used to identify and track bad actors, to link Bitcoin payments to real life entities or individuals, to identify the ownership of wallets, coins, and even interactions between two entities, and to allow that evidence to be used in legal pursuance, if indeed required. The example I want to use today is WannaCry. How many of you in the room heard about WannaCry? Cool. A few of you. For those that didn't, this is what it looked like. So if you're a member of the NHS in the UK, which is the entity that's responsible for looking after every individual's health in the UK, or if you were an employee or a provider of Telefonica services, this is the screen that you work up to. It's your worst nightmare. What it says, for those of you that can't see it, maybe at the back, is your data's encrypted. To gain access to it, you need to pay us an amount of Bitcoin. And if you don't do it with a certain time, your data's all going to be wiped away. Now, if you're a regular layperson in the NHS, maybe you're a, I don't know, you're a heart surgeon or you're dispensing pills, you see something like this, you imagine the fear 
that gets into your heart. So we use this as an example. And what we took was, if you look at the bottom here, you can see there was a, a suggested wallet address to which payments should be made. We'll come back to that in a second. We used our tool to plug in on this screen at the top in our search bar. We plugged in the entity's name, WannaCry. Now in this search bar at the top, you could equally put the Bitcoin address or you could put a wallet. But in this instance, you can just, as we're going to show you, free type in WannaCry as an entity. And what we're showing you here is eventually how we build up a picture of these transactions that were received into WannaCry from those individuals and institutions who did decide to pay and where those transactions flowed to the point of eventual encashment. So the screen that's up right now starts to show you information about WannaCry. You can see that we've identified just within a few minutes that there were three addresses associated with WannaCry, some 359 transactions, and then our risk score is showing that there's probably 100% certainty that this is associated with illicit activity. You can see the total amount of Bitcoin that was received, the total amount of Bitcoin that was sent. So that's the start point. From here, we dig a little deeper and we want to begin looking at the individual transactions because we want to try and follow the breadcrumb trail to see where this money flowed into, to trace where it's going out to, and to see if we can identify the individuals that were conducting this illicit activity. So highlighted is just one transaction. You'll see it's in red because that's an output, so we're trying to follow to where it goes. We end up with this screen using the crystal tool, which presents us with some information. Now that's quite interesting. You can step through that information. You can see, again, some of the transactions that are listed. And with this particular transaction, you begin to build up a picture of the risk score again. And the risk score changes because it's creating an association between each of the transactions associated as it flows through. But more interestingly, for law enforcement agencies, for financial institutions, we begin to build in some visualization tools here. So we're starting to now dig down into the transaction. And here's the first hop. We're seeing that from WannaCry to the next stage in the chain, we're beginning to build up a picture of this information and trace the transaction as it steps through the different hops. If we go to the next level, we can now see that the further away from the original instigator, the original receiver of the transaction, the lower the risk score is getting, but the more solid the picture is becoming. So we're slowly following this, this particular transaction as it moves through the blockchain to the point where we get to the full picture. Now this begins to show us the point, the point on the left-hand side, which is WannaCry, and that transaction as it has flowed all the way through the blockchain to the point where it gets to the particular exchange that they were using to take out that Bitcoin into fiat. So in this example with WannaCry, what we've shown here using our tool, and we ran this live, those of you that are interested can come see us after. We'll happily step through a demo with you. But this took us just a few minutes using our tool to pull together which otherwise would have taken a law enforcement agency without access to these tools, for example, perhaps a few days or even longer to pull together. So we're very proud today to have released Crystal Blockchain to the market. We're drawing on the experience of Bitfury, some seven years of operation in this space. And I'd like to introduce you to, to Mike, Mike Dubois, who has recently joined Bitfury to spearhead Crystal into the market, just to give you a few observations. Please be easy on Mike if you've got questions, because I think it's only Mike's second day in post. So Mike's just going to say a few words to you. Thank you, Mike. Right, a very few words. Uh, actually, this, today is my officially my first day. So, <clears throat> so it's coming to a blockchain conference is like, well, drinking water through a fire hose. and. Uh, um, but I am I'm really excited to uh, to team with uh, Bitfury um, and to introduce this sensational product to the U.S. market. My background is in law enforcement. I've really 26 years as a federal prosecutor. I used to be uh, chief of the cybercrime division at U.S. Department of Justice. Um, and <clears throat> the uh, the key to our local and international investigations almost always were the investigators, obviously, but also what the investigators were working with. 
And this tool is, can do so much, I mean, it, this just barely touches on what it can do. And I'm very much looking forward to working with law enforcement, working with uh, financial institutions, uh, exchanges, so that this tool can also be customized to meet all your needs. It could be you know your customer rules, could be anti-money laundering, uh, it could be attribution in a criminal case, whatever it is, this tool can do it. And we have, I think, the best, uh, best bunch of, of uh, tech, uh, tech experts um, assigned to it and constantly looking to improve it. So if you'd like a demo or would like to work to customize it to fit your needs, please let us know. Come up. Thanks. Okay, well, thanks, everybody. That's the end of our demos. Uh, we appreciate you all turning up. If you've got any questions, we'll be sitting down here. We can run demos. We can take your details, get in touch. But thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of the show. And uh, happy blockchain. <laughs>